Hello everybody, this is Fiona from SchoolNet greeting you and welcoming you to a series of webinars from past winners and finalists in the Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. Today we have Lyneth Crichton from Brescia House of Johannesburg presenting highlights from her project. Lyneth's project is called DigiGirls Puzzle It Out. Lyneth was a winner in South Africa last year and also a winner in the second round, which was the Middle East and Africa finals in Jordan. This enabled her to participate in the Global Forum in Washington, D.C. Just to give you the context of her project, to kick off their Anywhere Anytime Learning Netbook program, the Grade 10 girls attended a workshop in which they explored their novel for English called Cry the Beloved Country. Using Web2 collaborative tools, the girls collaborated on a wiki participated in an online discussion forum, created a podcast and developed a word cloud with the help of various staff experts and across a range of learning areas. So thank you for being willing to give this presentation and over to you, Lynn. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Good evening and it's great to join you all. I'm going to talk about my project. Um, hopefully you'll follow along. Just let me know if the slides don't change. Uh, we had an exciting year last year, the three of us traveling all over the world. But um, at our school we also had one. We started integrating laptops into the everyday life of the school and that's in essence where my project came from. We tried to find a way that and a project that would let the learners learn something about their, their new laptops having with them with them every day and at the same time make it academically sound and they could do things that would form part of their academic assessment. So my project actually took the main chunk of it, part of a three-day workshop. We did preparation before um, in the fact that the girls read the book The Cry of the Beloved Country. And if, if you've read that book, it's not an easy book to read. And most average 16-year-old girls think that there is nothing that relates to them in the book. So besides teaching them a large number of IT skills and how to work a laptop. We tried to make the book The Cry of Beloved Country, which was written in 1947, relevant to their lives. So if you look at the slide, you can see my um, description of the project and the design of the learning. We, um, I've done a lot of research about 21st century skills and um, learning spaces, so we tried to kind of fill all my dreams. And um, when I did my PowerPoint presentation, especially for the Global Forum, I tried to make it that um, everything linked together because that's how my, um, it made it much easier to click on. So. The slide we're looking at now is basically my project in a nutshell. The girls and the teachers collaborated together using all the um, Web2 tools on the left of live at AG from Microsoft, Skype, Twitter, Blackberry, Facebook, our school blog and discussion forums using our Moodle to integrate information through from YouTube, from podcasts that we created, word clouds, images we took and, and we searched for, creating avatars about the members of the book to create a Cry the Beloved Country wiki. The wiki um, worked in a, in a group format. Uh, all the girls had a, an individual part to play in one of the eight essential themes of the book and we used all the web two tools and collaboration tools to allow them to 
figure out what where they wanted to take it and kind of one of the main rules of the whole project was that there were no rules um whatever the girls came up with the teachers were just kind of there to guide them but if they decided this was what the author meant and they could substantiate it then it was fine um mm, i don't think that Sorry, went too far. Okay, uh, the main um, knowledge building and critical thinking of the project was the eight themes formed our basis for the girls to research. And what I tried to do throughout the project was not make it, and now for the next 10 minutes we're going to learn how to tweet, and then now we're going to learn how to... Um, do a word cloud we kind of went backwards and forwards from each part of our wiki we learned a new skill learned something about our laptop and went back and integrated into our own wiki page so for example we learned how to hyperlink and then each girl went to their own wiki page and looked for connections to other members of their group and other members of the whole grade to find where they could kind of pass on their knowledge. One of the keys of the project was also to give the girls um, confidence in their IT skills and abilities so that they didn't always have to rely on the IT teacher or the teacher for the knowledge, but also understanding that each one of them, much like a puzzle piece, if they contributed what they knew to the project, the skills they knew, they could actually use that to develop their own knowledge and kind of repackage it in a way that they understood. Um, the learning went beyond the classroom in the fact that the girls wore casual uniform, but we weren't restricted to the classroom. They could sit outside. When they podcasted their prepared reading for English, they actually went, some of them, out to the gardens with their laptops and either recorded their reading on Audacity or they used their Blackberries and recorded the sound that way and then emailed it to their English teacher to play the prepared reading for marks. So the traditional school hours and the school days were kind of thrown out the window and we did it Web2 style and the best part for the girls was we took their social life with their Blackberry Messenger and their Facebook and their Skyping and we kind of married it with traditional boring English themes and novels and knowing what a character sketch is and knowing who did what in the book. We also showed only one group the movie and then kind of much like a, a, a colored ink drop into a basin of water, let their knowledge of what the movie was like, let them spread and find the, the relevant parts of the movie to show the other girls. We did this as a grade project, so throughout the three days there were actually 72 girls and the teachers worked on a, like, in and out basis. They actually just visited the venue we were in and they had a lesson with the girls. And, but while they were not in class, were available via email or um, via Skype. I know the one Afrikaans teacher kept getting interrupted when the girls were sending her messages and Skyping. And some of the funny stories were the girls stopped getting up and walking around the classroom because they found it much easier to video Skype each other to have their chat. So, so there was actually so much collaboration in the project that it's quite hard to write about it all. Um, they used all different types and they kind of used the part, the collaboration tool that suited them the best. The one that they found worked 
for them the best and um, worked for their group and the information they were trying to uh, discover. Um, the results of the project were, according to the English department, it's the best grounding they've ever had in the novel The Cry of the Beloved Country because the girls got to see why the themes of that book are actually so important in today's um, society and their community and see why it is relevant and it's not just a book uh, that was set 60 years ago but those themes still actually affect our lives and have been repeated on numerous occasions by numerous people um, Barack Obama being the latest um, who, who uses those themes in his administration. I'm not sure if anybody wants to ask anything. Um, the part that I found the best was that I had fun and the girls had fun and for me that was actually almost more important than, than learning to repeat what was written in an English book, that we could actually have fun learning and that some of the girls actually went back and read the book. They wanted to read it almost with fresh eyes, which for me made them feel, made me feel that it were, all the hard work was worth it. Um, though the main part of the project took three days, the preparation in the IT backbone and um, making sure the girls had read the book it took about a month before and actually the project that happened in March actually only concluded in June when they wrote their final Cry the Beloved Country exam where they had to in, uh, write emails and um, write a blog entry and that in their June exam paper. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. Fiona, yeah. And like with um, Louise, if anybody wants to contact me, you can um, get my details through Fiona, and I'd happy to help you in any way. I don't know if there are no questions if you want to pass the mic to Natalie. Oh, must I hand it back to you? And thank you so much, Lena. Thank you very much for pre presenting. I'm actually learning quite a lot from watching other people present now because um, I'm not quite sure if everyone's moving their slides or what slide is supposed to be on or and that sort of thing. So you're giving me new things to think about. But I don't. You didn't have more than the. You, you just had a few slides. I, could, I think I'm just looking now. Yeah. So thank you so much for that interesting presentation. That was Lilith Crichton from Rescare House in Johannesburg. We'd like to thank you very much for your presentation, Lilith. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening in.